っていう。<笑><笑>
you very much. Good night, madame. Good night, sir. Good night. Enjoy your meal. No. Good. <clears throat> Getting a bit colder outside now. Yes, it is cold. Yes. Do you mind if I smoke? No. Some people mind, you know. I always ask permission first. My nephew's in the Merchant Navy. Brings these all the way from Burma. <laughs> Whenever I'm in town, I come here. Old George looks after me like a Dutch uncle. And it's quiet. I like it quiet. Not one of these people who likes to have his dinner in the parrot house at the zoo. Besides, they know me here, yeah? and that makes a difference, of course. Don't you, George? Yes, sir. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was just telling them, one of the things I like about this place is that even though it's packed jammed to the door, it's always quiet. What's that music on the wireless? A uh, bit of Chopin, I fancy, sir. Right. It's in the private home, a small wedding party. Oh, really? Give them my love. <laughs> Very good, <laughs> sir. But I don't suppose they'll need it. <laughs> oh, need it. <laughs> Look out, sir! <laughs> Unless you want to go through the floor. <laughs> on by the edge, sir. <laughs> on by the edge. You're on thin ice, you are, sir, there. <laughs> I suppose we all are these days. Easy does it this way, sir. I forgot. You told me, huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> Makes you think, doesn't it, hey? Could have broken his blooming neck there. My goodness. Oh, the soup's hot. <coughs> Can't think how they do it. Ah, do, plant, do, to revoir. Gonna give us a bit of a song, are you? Very good. But go on. Don't mind me, I like it. Who are you? Gooch. My name's Gooch. The car here somewhere. Ah, here we are. I don't know you. It's very impertinent of you to speak to me. Oh, there's nice manners, I must say. Merely passed a civil remark. Oh. George, shift me over to that, that table there, will you? As you please, sir. Bring me another of these, please. Very good, madame. That's me, sir, early enough already. Oh, I don't want that soup. Take oh, that away. Very good, sir. On by the edge, sir. I know, I know. Don't keep on telling me. Uh, coffee. Uh, and, er, uh, cuddle. Very good, sir. My father is dead, I think. He was a mild man with a great red beard. He wore a beard because shaving hurt him. His skin was very tender. My mother died before him. And I was the eldest of seven daughters. I don't know why I'm talking about him. He is dead, you see. They are both dead, my father and my mother. I bet he was a clergyman. Yes, yeah. my father was a clergyman. Yes, we had a laburnum tree at the vicarage. The pods were poisonous. We were told that we must not on any account eat the pods. It was like the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden. Only that was an apple tree, and this was a laburnum tree. I ate some laburnum seeds, and I was very ill. But I learned no more about good, and no more about evil by that act. All that came later. And my father was very angry. He was terrible in his rage. I wore a white sailor suit when I ate the laburnum. My father thought I did it out of badness, or to show off. There were several little boys there when I ate the laburnum. But he was wrong. Perhaps God was wrong about Adam and Eve. I only wanted to know about good and evil, and that was reasonable enough. That was very, very reasonable. Even God is often unreasonable. Pull for the shore, sailor, pull for the shore. Heed not the rolling breakers, stand to the oar. No, madam. Please, madam, you can't do that sort of thing here. Why not? Well, madam, it stands to reason. You do not wish me to sing. No, please, madam, if it's all the same to you. Very well. Bring me another brandy. Uh, well, madam, it's not for me to say, but don't you think you've had about enough? Would it be too much to ask you not to argue with me? I've had a very trying day. I should be very much obliged if you'd bring me quietly and quickly another brandy. Very good, madam. 
A small brandy, I think you said, madame? No, a large brandy. Oh, very good, madame. Anything to follow, sir? Oh, nothing, thank you. Some coffee? Yes, please, some coffee. And your kibble. <laughs> Would you like a nice cigar? No. Don't smoke. Ah. I bought you a nice bit of apple flan. Oh, thank you. Having a bit of trouble with her, aren't you? No, sir, not at all, sir. Does she come here often? Not very often, sir. Hello. What's this, a cat? A cat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Somebody must have left it behind, George. I thought it was a cat. Oh, no cats here, sir. I like cats. They do not give one solitary dam. One of the young ladies must have left it. I'll take charge of it, sir. Oh, my love, there it is. I thought I'd lost it. No, miss. This gentleman found it all right. Oh, that was most terribly kind of you. Not at all. What is your name? Don't pay any attention, miss. What is your name? Oh, Maisie MacArthur. How old are you? 21. Oh, that is not very old. It's my birthday today. Really? Got the key of the door, have you? Oh, yes, as a matter of fact. This <laughs> is a very bad time to be 21. Well, perhaps it's always a bad time to be 21. It is a wretched age. Where do you live? Uh, well, as a matter Write of fact... Write it down and give it to me. Uh, I shouldn't, uh, if I was you, miss. You never know these days. I should like to know where you live. Come here and write it down. Oh. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Absolutely no use telling anybody anything, is it? Thank you very much. Goodbye. Oh, thank you. I must run now. Thank you ever so for finding my glove. Don't mention it. Good night, all. On my 21st birthday, my father took me to London for a treat. I'd never before heard the long, subdued, pulsating roar of London. I thought of an enormous beast purring in its sleep. My father took me to this restaurant. He used to come to this restaurant when he was at Cambridge. He was once dining here on the night of the InterVarsity rugby match. He was dining with the Cambridge fullback. He went out into Dean Street and the Cambridge fullback tackled a trotting handsome cab horse. He tackled it low. The horse fell and the cab fell over on its side, but nobody was hurt except my father. The cabman hit him, but he hit the cabman too. My father was a very good boxer. They were all taken to Vine Street but it was all right. They drank with the cabman till four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I've never seen anybody look so happy as my father did when he was telling that story. I cannot imagine why he looked happy. The poor horse might have been seriously hurt. <laughs> Men have brutality in their bones. There are no exceptions, none. If you'll permit me to say so, madam, now you're being downright insulting. Our gardener used to beat his wife. He was covered with hair, like a monkey. She was worse than he was. She liked being beaten. Our gardener was kind to me because he was a hypocrite, but I did not know that at the time. He gave me a piece of cherry wood once that looked like a doll. I dressed it up in some silk rags and loved it more passionately than I've ever loved anything in my life. I still feel faint when I smell cherry wood. That isn't what I was going to say. What was it I was going to say? I do not know, madam. So much more, you'd be out on your ear. I've seen you before, somewhere. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Everything has happened before. The dark ages have happened before. The apes have beaten us before when we thought they were feeding out of our hands. I had an old aunt once who opened a gorilla's cage in a menagerie. She couldn't bear to see him in the cage because he was so like her late husband, my uncle. She had managed my uncle by kindness, all by kindness. She thought everything could be done by kindness. It can't, you know. Have you seen a play called The Tempest? Yes, madam. My father took me to The Tempest as a great treat when I was nine years old. It wasn't a great treat, it was a terrible nightmare. It was about an old scientist on an island. He had a daughter who was almost an imbecile. He had a slave called Caliban. He tortured poor Caliban with rheumatism and frightened him with spangled spooks. 
And after 20 years on the island, he sailed away and left it worse than it was before. No pooks, no spooks, nothing but rheumatism, and Caliban in a bad temper. <laughs> then Caliban got two new masters. One was drunk and the other was silly. I don't know what he did with them after the liquor went dry. He probably ate them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God the place stopped before that. It always happens. It always happens. And hundred generations, the leaves of autumn have dropped into the grave. And again, we shiver miserably in the confines of a long winter, as Christendom and the Roman Empire did hundreds of years ago. Again and again, and again and again, we have covered the face of the earth with order and loveliness and a little justice, but only the face of it. Deep down below, the subterranean brutes have bided their time to shake down our churches and palaces and let loose the little rats to sport among the ruins. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, here you are. How very good of you. I'm afraid you spoil me. Oh, it's horrible brandy. But I am passionately fond of brandy of any kind. It's like loving children, isn't it? We never realize that all children are different, do we? Your taxi is waiting, madame. Oh, poor taxi. It is terrible to wait and wait and wait and often to find that nothing happens after all. May I help you on with your coat, madame? No, no, that's not what I meant. Give the taxi some money and send it away. You won't be too pleased, madame. My life is not very important, but I find it too important to devote it entirely to pleasing taxes. Be good enough to do as I tell you. Very good, madame. George! If you can't deal with it, why don't you send for the manager? Oh, it's all right, sir. You leave it to me, sir. You must all come and see me in my beautiful garden. I shall tell Vincent to prepare a very special tea party. I shall write to all of you, to all of you. Uh, but I haven't got your addresses. I've only got two here. There is a gentleman over there who has said nothing at all. He will be a very valuable guest at my tea party. I'm afraid I talk far too much myself. You can't go round the edge. Don't go across that. It's dangerous. Good evening. Good evening. What is your name? Watson. Where do you live? What's that got to do with you? Oh, perhaps I didn't make myself clear. Uh, would you give me your card if you have one? Of course I've got one, if it's any use to you. You're not ashamed of it, are you? <laughs> I'm not ashamed of anything. Oh, how fortunate you are. Uh, would you let me have your card, please? Yeah, all right. There you are. Oh, thank you. That is so very, very good of you. Ah, there you are. Where the devil have you been? Just here. Oh. You look like a hypnotised rabbit. Fill my glass. Splendid. Well, come on, Beth. All right, Bill. Will you bring Bill to my tea party? Oh, yes. Thanks ever so much. Good night, then. Good night. Good night. Good night, then. Oh, I know that I am bound for a journey down the sand in the midst of a refuse mound, but what the hell, what the hell? Oh, I should worry and fret. Death and I will coquette. There's a dance in the old dame yet. Toujours gay, toujours gay. Ours is the zest of the alley cat. What do you think, Archie? It's not my name, Archie. You haven't given me your name, have you? No, excuse me, not yet. But I know you, don't I? I do not think so. Oh, it doesn't matter if I know you or not. My name is Mahitabel. It's an interesting name. I lurk in the alleys. I'm the prima ballerina of the crumbling chimney stacks and the wet, slippery slates. Did you drink my brandy? No, madam. I must have drank it myself. You look honest enough. Very kind of you to say so. Are you a foreigner? Yes, madam. At home I'm not a foreigner, but now I have no home. Yes, the stakshe za bunka nim kotem. Jakiś inny twusty kot pies miski twoje mleko. You speak Polish, madam. Do I? I asked you if you were a stray cat, too. I asked you if some other fat cat was lapping at your saucer of milk. Yes, madam, you asked that. A fat cat is sitting in my saucer, but there is no milk. My name is Ernest Piast. I live at the Young Men's Christian Association in Bedford Place. Piast? We may have met, I cannot tell. 
the probability of an event is the ratio of the number of cases that favor it to the number of all the possible cases that ought to occur rather than the others, which renders them for us equally possible. <laughs> you have read then Laplace on probabilities. No, not I. No, my father told me that and I remembered it. But we may have met. It may even be probable you will come to my tea party. I shall be honored. <laughs> I hope there's somebody there to keep the party clean. What did you say? I merely passed a remark. Then keep your remarks to yourself, you goddamn greasy toad. Oh. Suppose you call yourself a lady. I should be interested to know what you call yourself. I could suggest several names. Oaf, lout, don't, pig, ass, ape, slubber de gullion, son of a bitch, clown, fool, lickspittle cobface, imbecile idiot, stinkard. Here, now let's have a little bit less. You last bitten tinker's car. How dare you speak to me? I've no desire to speak to you. Then keep your blasted trap shut. I'm sorry, sir. All right, all we right. Are I'm closing. looking for a friend of mine. Home. Now. Oh, hello, Vincent. I'm not going home. I've found my affinity. Well, he can wait. Here's your coat. By God, you've led me a pretty Don't dance. Don't touch me. Don't you dare touch me. Get up, then. My friend, you must behave yourself. Now, you keep out of this, all right? Keep out of it, do you hear? I hear perfectly well. It's all well. right. He's taking the lady home. He's not taking the lady home unless she wishes to go home. How beautiful, Ernest. I do love you. Madame, if you'll accept me for your escort. You sit down, sir, before you get hurt. Ernest, take me with you to the YMCA. I told you to sit down. You get out of my way. Here, kill him, Ernest, my darling, my lad. Now, oh, you be quiet. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> I've never seen the like oh. of this. Yeah, I'm sorry, sir, but you did ask for it. Come on. Oh, poor Ernest. Yes. Yes, Vincent, I think I had better come with you. You have the car? Yes, ma'am. Uh, have you got your bill? No, pay it, please. Waiter. He isn't dead, is he? Fortunately, no. A couple of fibers cover it. I think so. A bit of better. Keep the change. There's no change. You, you can lump it. And tell your boyfriend there I'm not going to sue him for assault. Good night. Good night to you. Ready? Yes. She rose a little from the ground and passed from the room like a ghost. You think we should fetch a doctor? No, no, no. Forgive me. I'm OK. All right, I'll take you home. No, please, it's not needful. I shall pay, I shall go. You are very kind. Well, you can't say we don't see life, can you? <laughs> the less, the better. Oh, I wouldn't say that, George. Who was that dame, anyway? Well, pleasant enough lady, when she's sober. She's been a good looker in her day. No doubt, sir. But her day's past now. I suppose it is, sir. It's very sad. When they drink. Bells, eh? I think I hear bells. Yes, darling, bells. Well, what bells? What time is it? The nonconformist chapel communicants are just going to have their afternoon service. It's nearly four o'clock. <laughs> Hope they enjoy it. So do I. Mm. I suppose they will in their own quiet way. Have you had a good sleep? Uh, perhaps I have. <laughs> I mean, I'm conscious. I know nothing about it. <laughs> are we having tea here? Would you like it here? Is anyone coming? I don't think so. You didn't ask anybody? I hope not. I feel a little tired today. You don't suppose some abominable bores might take it into their heads to pop in? I think I've got them trained to stay away when they're not invited. Still, you might have asked someone at the hospital board meeting or somewhere and forgotten all about it. You are sometimes forgetful and... You know, it's, 
fine afternoon for October. Yes, all the more reason why you should banish these morbid thoughts. No, I think we're quite safe. Good. Just you and me, then. Just you and me, darling. Oh, there you are, Vincent. Uh, we'll have tea out here, just for Sir Joseph and me. We'll have it now, before the afternoon gets any colder. Yes, my dear. Excuse me, lady. Could I speak to you for a moment? Yes, of course, sir. It's a bit awkward. There's a young man who says he wants to see you. I told him you're not at home, but he won't go away. What? Hey, well, what's that about that? What, what are you brethren about? I was asking about the tea, sir. Uh, uh, fetch it, ma'am. Will you fetch it? And don't stand haver in there. I'm afraid we've got a visitor, after all. Who is it, Vincent? A young foreign gentleman, my lady. He says you invited him for this afternoon. Name of Ernest Pierst. Pierst? I don't remember the name. Well, I think I remember him, my lady. I'd have dealt with him, but I thought he might cause trouble. He showed me your invitation. It's in your hand, well, right? For God's sake, stop mumbling. To tell a damn fellow her ladyship's not at home. I told him that, sir. He's still there? Yes, sir. What's he say? I said, yes, sir. Well, kick him downstairs. Very good, sir. If those are my instructions. You shouldn't need instructions. I'm afraid you're a bit of a sissy, Vincent. No, stop. I think I remember. No, send him here, Vincent, and make it tea for three. Very well, my lady, if that is your wish. But, uh... Well, what's he waiting for? I don't know, darling. What are you waiting for, Vincent? Hope you realise I'm doing my best. What's he say? He says he's doing his best. Well, I never want to see him doing his worst. Thank you, my lady. I don't like the fellow. He's a sulky sort of type. I'll get on to the doctor and ask him to send someone else. He does very well. Hmm? No. I mean, do we need a man of that kind now? You're better, aren't you? Yes, dear, it's much better. Well, then, I'll, I'll speak to the doctor. If you like. Stands to reason you can't sit on a dozen committees without having a clearer head than most people. And he reminds me. I'd rather you didn't remind me. I know. I'm sorry. I'm... I can't keep my mouth shut. Forgive me. Oh, of course, dearest. Uh, dearest, you'll have to forgive me. I'm afraid we've got a visitor after all. Oh, I say, damn it. I told Vincent to kick him downstairs. I don't think that would do. I promise he won't stay long. Well, who is it? He's a very charming, young, displaced person. Oh, 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 I'm all... oh no, don't. It's only for a little while. I have some difficulty in following when most people try to speak English, except you, my dear. But I will not bust myself trying to follow broken English. Uh, tell Vincent to take some tea into my study. Very naughty. I shall have to punish you. Oh, not you. You're far too kind-hearted. It's a funny thing, that, but it's true. Most kind-hearted women have faces like the back of a cab, but you haven't. Um, don't understand you at all. Ernest Pierce. Ernest Pierce. No, I don't remember. Mr. Pierce. Oh. Uh, Vincent, would you take barley water to Sir Joseph in the study and bring tea here? Thank you, lady. Uh, my lady, if you don't recall who this young gentleman is, and if he tries any of his blackmailing tricks, you can tell him that I do know him. I know him very well. Thank you, my lady. So you and Vincent are old friends? No, madam. Uh, then you must not mind what he says. He's a little eccentric. He is then your servant? Yes, of course. I see. You don't think that's why I came here to blackmail you? Why should you? And I invited you, didn't I? Yes, madam, it was most kind of you. Yeah, very well, then. Uh, Vincent has simply said something rather extraordinary, and uh, we shall pretend not to have heard him. He... Now, <coughs> uh, tell me all about yourself. Yes, madam, but first, I do not wish that there should be any mistake at the commencement of our acquaintance, no. It would be a pity to make any mistakes at all. What is troubling you? I read in an English novel this word, blackmail. You cannot believe it of me that I would do such a thing. Well, naturally. Or I should not have invited you to tea. Now, we agreed to forget all about that foolish Vincent and his strange, insane manner of talking. It's natural that you should not like me, but that's no reason for saying such things. I don't understand. I thought you didn't know him. No, I said we were not friends. You don't remember, then, the manner in which I made his acquaintance? Help me. I'll try to remember. I hit him on the head. Uh, you hit him on the head? Yes, madam. It comes back to me gradually. Yes, why did you do that? Because his conduct to you was unbearable. Oh, poor Vincent. I should do it again. 
You must be a very violent young man. You must never believe that of me. Let me think. Uh, where did all this happen? At Le Trois au Port. In Soho? Yes, madam. I see. And then I wrote to you asking you to come to tea. Yes, madam, in the Polish language. Oh, you were a Pole then. Well, my father was Polish, my mother was Scottish. I have applied for naturalization. I wish to become a British subject. An extraordinary ambition. Uh, are your parents dead? I think they are, madam. You don't want to go back to Poland? Why? I've been back to Poland. You found there was nothing for you in Poland? Well, my mother and father had disappeared. I fought for a little time with the Russian partisans. My parents would never have approved. My father did not like the communists because he was a baron. My mother did not like them because they are atheists. I wish to become an English nonconformist. My mother and I used to go to the little Scottish church in Krakow. Do you know it? I didn't know it existed. Not now, I think, but we were very strict. Uh, my husband was once a nonconformist. At least he got into Parliament on the nonconformist vote in 1906. He is dead now, no? No, he's very much alive. He lives here, no? Yes. Oh. Shall I serve tea, my lady? Um, later, Vincent, please. He's been a long time your servant? Vincent? Oh, yes, yes, quite a long time. He's quite one of the family. One of the family? Yes. Well, uh, don't let us bother about Vincent. I want to hear all about you. You must have led a very exciting and dangerous life. Perhaps. I don't know. Don't you take any delight in danger? No, not much. But you were with the partisans. You must have had times when you were living with great intensity. One night I lie awake in a wet ditch for 12 hours waiting to kill a German soldier. When it was between the day and the night, I killed him. You may think then that this was life and very intense. Not so. Things like that are not life unless we know how to appreciate what they mean. I was like a stupid cat who killed a rat. Was I better on that morning or worse than one who strolls in a Hampstead garden? Oh, surely it is more exciting to stalk Germans than to stroll in a garden. Not so, unless you have education, unless you are educated. Ah, education. I have been very thoroughly educated. At least I can read and write. It's never done with the slightest bit of good. I've spent hours reading about what other people have done instead of going out and doing things for myself. But you cannot do anything for yourself or for other people unless you have education. You cannot construct. I don't want to construct. I want to experience things. I want danger. I want to risk something. I want to risk my health, my reputation, my livelihood, my life itself. We can only appreciate what we have by risking it. But even to take risks is meaningless without education. But education may be wrong. Well, that's true and that's terrible. But even if it is wrong, it makes us different from the beasts. Oh, why do you want to be different from the beasts? Beasts are delightful. If they had a sense of humor and the gambling instinct, they would be perfect. It's possible that you are a very bad woman. I do not know. My mother told me that some women are very bad, though she took good care that I never met one. You've only met good ones? Yes, only good ones. Even with the partisans? With the partisans, they aren't women at all. They are avenging animals. No, it's only when we are idle that we realize that women are women. Well, at this moment, we are pretty idle. Yes. And you realize that I am a woman? Yes. And you have decided that I am a bad one. I do not say that. I do not know. Well, perhaps you'd better go home and look me up in a book. I do not wish to go home yet. In that case, we'd better go in for tea. Please, yes. I wish I could remember how I met you first. There must have been something interesting about you or I should not have invited you to tea, but I can't think what it can be. I do not interest you. Not very much, I'm afraid. No, you seem to me to be rather a conceited, argumentative young man. Yes, I was afraid I might appear so to you. You don't mind my saying so, do you? It makes me very sad, but I'm not offended. I am conceited, argumentative and young. You speak only the truth. Tell me more about our first meeting. See, my memory plays me the evilest tricks. To me, it was most like when spring rain falls 
and the dead meadows begin to stir and breathe. Oh, my dear Ernest, there is another side to your character. Well, I tell you simply how it appeared to me. When did this happen? It was on last Tuesday. You seem to remember now. There were a lot of other people there, too. Yes. There was a fat man, a noisy man, and several cheerful young people. Was it a good party? No, it... I... I seldom go to parties nowadays. I have not been very well. I'm sorry. I ought to remember. Do tell me more. It was at a restaurant. It wasn't a party. I must have drunk an awful lot, did I? I think you did. It was foolish of me. I don't remember writing to you even. What did I say? You said, dear Mr. Piast, it is very seldom in this year of grace that one meets anyone that one wants to meet again, but I want to meet you. Will you take tea with me on Sunday afternoon at this address? In case you do not remember me, I had dinner next to you yesterday evening. Yours very sincerely, Catherine Pitts. You are perhaps Catherine Pitts? No doubt about it. I thought you must be. So you came. It was very good of you. I came because it was necessary to come. Necessary, Ernest? Yes. I'd seen you once and all was changed. You were la gloriosa donna della mia mente. Dante said that about Beatrice. It means the glorious lady of my mind. You are the glorious lady of my mind. Of my mind, Mrs. Pitts. Uh, well, it's Lady Pitts, as a matter of fact. You are then noble? My husband is a baronet. That is a sort of little baron. <laughs> it would not have mattered to me if you had been a princess. That you are a little lower in rank does not matter to me either. We don't ask for the pedigree of the planets. I am beginning to enjoy our little chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vincent, they're very tiresome of you. What is it now? There is a Miss MacArthur to see you, my lady. She has another young lady and two young gentlemen with her. She says she has an appointment. Oh, who in the world is she, Vincent? Do you know her? No, my lady. And uh, Mr. Piast has been telling me about this party where you and he came to blows. Was she at the party? I did not see her, my lady. Is she a young lady or a young person? A young person, my lady. I think we'd better go in. You were quite wrong about him, you know, Vincent. I hope so, my lady. He says that you hit him, but that he hit you first. You wouldn't like to shake hands or anything. No, my lady. Vincent is sometimes a little difficult. I have found him so. I know, it's a pity. Oh, here they come. I've never seen them before in my life. How good of you to come, Miss McArthur. How very nice of you to bring your friends. Have you had tea? Well, as a matter of fact, no. Actually, you asked us to tea. Oh, of course I did. <laughs> yeah, Vincent, would you bring some tea, please? Yes, my lady. Well, this is very nice. It's quite like old times. Uh, do, please, find a seat for yourselves. Now, you know Mr. Piast, of course. No, I don't. Oh, yes, you were, I mean, to say there, weren't you? Yes. How do you do? This is Helen Willis. And Bob Kentish and Bill Wishful. They're awful fools, really. Oh, I'm very unjust of you. I don't think they're a bit awful. <laughs> <clears throat> it was most terribly kind of you to have us. Of course, we'd all heard of you, and I swore black and blue that I knew you, only by sight, of course. And I was quite right, wasn't I, Bill? Absolutely right, yes. <laughs> I saw you at that film premiere. You were running for the deaf and dumb. You remember? I don't remember you, I'm afraid. Oh, I wasn't anybody, really. I managed to get a ticket somehow. You were representing the dumb, I presume. You think you're terribly funny, don't you? And Queen Mary was there. Oh, yes, I remember her. And Abbott and Costello. It was terribly exciting. I'd never been at one of those things before. So, uh, you were all at this party at... What was the name of the place? The Trois au Port. Yes. You walked on the floor. It was funny. <laughs> it would have been funnier if I'd walked on the ceiling, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, no, I mean, the floor was dangerous. George said so. George? The waiter. Oh, the waiter. 
I'd never have dared to walk on that floor. George told you, but you paid no attention. I'd never have dared. <clears throat> when was this? When I came back for my gloves. Oh, thank you, my lady. There are two gentlemen to see you, my lady. They say you're expecting them, a Mr. Gooch and a Mr. Watson. Oh, they sound like plain clothes policemen. <laughs> and no, my lady, they are not police officers. Uh, where are they? In the morning room, my lady. Tell them I shall come to them presently. Yes, my lady. I think our mad tea party is quite big enough, don't you? <laughs> Besides, we're talking about things that strangers might not understand. I'm not sure that I understand them myself. Do forgive me and don't dare go away, any of you. That's how she walked, right across the rotten floor. <laughs> Well, I don't think we have any reason to be here at all. You're only reminding her she was stinking tight. Absolutely. Well, I didn't want to come at all. Mm, well, it's Maisie's fault. Well, she asked us. Well, I wonder why the hell she did that. I think she's a bit mad. <laughs> More than a bit. <laughs> yes, still, I say, the old girl does herself pretty well. Be silent, you abominable people! I say, I think we'll have a little less of that, if you don't mind. Let's just remember you're talking to ladies. I'm not talking to ladies, I'm talking to blue behind the apes. <laughs> Yeah, you were my young lady. Yes, and you also, you, who desecrate the moonlit temple of Artemis with your simian chatterings. Yeah, I don't know who the devil you are, or indeed what the blazes you're talking about. But let me tell you, sir, that we didn't win the war to have some pop eyed foreigner chucking his weight about. I will just get the hell out of here. If you wish to fight me, I will fight you whenever you like and with whatever weapons you choose. Okay, Doug, but in the meantime, just get out. You'll tell me to get out, you miserable, stupid, salacious suburban beast. Now, look here, that's quite enough. That's quite enough. Shut up, girl. I'll, I'll talk to you. You're not there to talk to me, you ignorant pig. You aren't fit to talk to anybody. Anybody! Uh, have you seen the Observer anywhere? Uh, oh, excuse me, I, I'm interrupting. I, I'm afraid we've had a slight accident. Uh, What's that? Speak up. <laughs> I'm afraid we've had a slight accident. Oh, oh well, uh, there's a bell there. Better ring for Vincent. Huh. We're most frightfully sorry. Yeah. Here's my newspaper. <laughs> I hope you're ashamed of yourself. I am ashamed of myself. It's quite right, too. I'm so bad as you are. Thank you very much indeed. Should we ring the bell? No, let's get some of this straight first. I don't think there's much broken. If you're sorry, you might lend a hand. Yes, lend a hand. I wonder who that old guy was. <laughs> Another patient, I expect. <laughs> <laughs> we were idiots to come at all. Yeah, it was just Maisie's blasted curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> Blue behind it. It's an absolute lie. <laughs> I think there are some friends of yours. It, it, oh. I'm terribly sorry, Lady Pitts, but, um, we were fooling a bit and I'm afraid we've spoiled your lovely tea service. It doesn't matter a bit. Uh, but don't crawl about on the floor. You'll only spoil your clothes and that won't make things any better. I'm afraid, uh, afraid we were just fooling about. Well, in that case, uh, here's Mr. Gooch and Mr. Watson. Perhaps they'd like to fool about, too. <laughs> oh, my lady, I think our time in life is long past for that. <laughs> but, uh, may I, uh, may I have a word with you in private? Yeah, would the rest of you... Ernest, would you like to take them for a walk in the shrubbery? No. Yes, if you wish that I should. Do you like shrubberies, Mr. Watson? I haven't had the experience, ma'am. Well, there's nothing like a lovely new experience. Now, go, all of you, and come back in five minutes. <laughs> uh, there's a tiny little hill. If you climb it, you can see right over the wall, right down to London, if the day is clear. Uh, you've seen London, though, Mr. Watson. Uh, yes. Still, you can't have too much of a good thing. <laughs> Uh, I'll have something for you to eat and drink when you come back. Yes, now, Mr. Gooch, we shall have our tete-a-tete. -tete. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it you wanted to say to me? Uh, Lady Pitts, I, uh, <clears throat> I spoke to you in a very ungentlemanly fashion the other night. You see, I didn't know who you were. Uh, so I accepted your most kind and generous invitation so that I might have the opportunity of apologising for my own cultivated behaviour. You see, um, <clears throat> I'd add a drop or two. 
Uh, perhaps I had had a drop or two myself, Mr. Gooch. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Your Ladyship. And whether or not you was always the lady. No, no, there's no excuse for me. Uh, was that all you wanted to tell me? That was all, Your Ladyship. Then I accept your apology. Uh, go and fetch the others, will you? May I say how grateful I am that you've taken the unfortunate incident in the spirit? It will not occur again, I can assure you. No, I don't suppose it will. Fetch the others, will you? Only too happy to oblige. We'll bring the tray down here. We're having a very nice tea party, Vincent. Yeah, so I see, my lady. Oh. Yes, you can clear away the rubble. Why didn't you tell me about all these people? I knew nothing about them. I saw them for a minute in the restaurant. They were just an ordinary sort of crowd, as far as I was concerned. Except the young man who hit you. Yes, except for him. I didn't know you were going to write to them. Well, there must have been something about them that interested me. Well, I dare say it was all part of the evening's general gaiety. Quite sure it's safe to leave the whiskey with you. Oh, yes. You've had your fling for the next six weeks. Your sort doesn't like whiskey. Not for itself, I mean. My sort? The cyclothymic type. Oh, by the way, Sir Joseph bumped into that bunch. Did he? What did he think? How do I know what he thought? What he ever thinks. Will that be all, my lady? Yes, thank you, Vince. Is that you, Ernest? Where are the others? I found the little gate. I told them it would be wise for them to go. That was very impudent of you. I'm sorry. I asked Vincent why I had invited them. He said it was because I was drunk. But that is no explanation. Vincent is a very stupid man. He's a faithful watchdog, but a very stupid man. It's sad and strange that only stupid people are faithful. Have you noticed that, Ernest? It's not a universal law, but there is truth in what you say. I think I invited them because I was lonely. God, I am lonely. It cannot be that the unique and exquisite can be anything but lonely. My loneliness finds expression only in drunkenness and delirium. All the rest of the time, I say, keep off, keep far away from me. No, don't take my hand, please. Do you like my little summer house? It is a holy place. I want to plant a laurel bush just there. We have rhododendrons and bays in the shrubbery, but no laurels. When it grows to full height, I shall be dead. No. I am nearly 50. 50 what? 50 years? What are years? Years are nothing to you. You're only a boy. They were something to me until last Tuesday. They were made of long hours and long minutes to be filled with work and experience. But now they are nothing. There is not much meaning in what you say, Ernest. I cannot fall in love anymore. It isn't necessary that you should <laughs> fall in love. You can't give me anything you haven't given me already. You say there's not much meaning in what I say. That may be. I don't speak well English. But there is meaning for me now in the words happiness and grief, joy and sorrow. Oh my God, if only there were. Hey, don't be a fool. You don't know me. You know nothing about me. I know all that need be known. You think you're in love with me, don't you? I think so. It's calf love. You think I'm your poor damned Presbyterian mother or something? You come bleating to me because you've lost your way. I'm not a Presbyterian and I'm not your mother. And I've lost my way too. You've made a mistake. You were right about only one thing. I'm a bad woman. As bad as I knew how to be, as bad as be damned. I've been bad all over Europe and America, North and South. And now when I'm burned out and more than half mad, I'm playing at respectability with all the fervor I put into the other thing. I'm even the chairwoman of a marriage guidance clinic. I could tell them something. And now, I'm a kept woman. Kept in more senses than one. Vincent.
Vincent there is my keeper, among other things. His job is to keep me out of mischief when I have the impulse to dash out and say to the first beggar in the street, for God's sake, speak to me. Tell me I'm not the only creature in this damnable dead universe. I can only say that when I'm tight, you see. I think I told you that. Yes, you told me. So, you see, you'd better go away and find some young lady in Pont Street. By the way, the service at the chapel round the corner should be nearly finished. If you go now, you'll see dozens of them coming out, blushing with the beauty of holiness. There is the new moon. Well, I shouldn't pay any attention to that if I were you, unless you turn half a crown in your pocket. It's been a lovely day for the time of the year, quite an Indian summer. But it's getting cold now. I must go in. You have given me something else. How? By speaking as you have done. Oh, what have I given you? A little common sense? No, you have given me hope. been in long ago. Besides, the doctor said you weren't to excite yourself. Damned if I know what that Philip Vincent's thinking about. Then you come now, at once. Come along. Yes. Yes, Joe, darling. I'm coming. Getting damn cold. We may as well make the most of the weather while it lasts. There's a touch of frost this morning. What the devil's that? Her uh, ladyship had it planted last week, sir. What do you say? Her uh, ladyship had it planted last week, sir. It's a laurel bush. Well, yes, but she wanted to go planting that in November for it'll die. The devil's got into her head. She seemed all right a week ago, too. Better than she's been for years. You haven't had any trouble, have you, Vincent? No, no, sir, none at all. In fact, she's been more cheerful, easy in her mind. What's that? She's all right, sir. Well, I don't see the sense in planting a thing like that in November. Oh, I suppose she thought it better late than never. Oh, for God's sake, stop, mumbling man. Did she say why she planted it? No, sir. Right now. I'll ring you if I want a hot water bottle. Will that be all, sir? What? Yeah, yes. I came in by the little gate. That is not an answer to my question. I thought I might see Lady Pitts. Well, I'm afraid you can't. Her ladyship is not at home. But I must see her. There's no must about it, but you better go back the way you came. Uh, no, 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 that's all this. Yeah. Uh, young man made a slight mistake, so I'm showing him the way out. Did you hear last Sunday? No, I don't think so, sir. Uh, come out and let me look at you. I've seen you before somewhere. I was here last Sunday. Yeah. Well, uh, Yes, sit down. Don't stand there as if you'd uh, burst your braces. Get out, Vincent. This young man's a friend of Lady Pitt's. Yeah. Talking to that gadget, but uh, don't bellow. Hmm? What's your name? Ernest Piast. Italian? No, Polish. Oh, my God. Well, uh, Mr. whatever your name is, uh, it seems to me you're laboring under some misunderstanding. That's to say, if you're the young gentleman I saw practicing catch as catch can with my wife last Sunday, I suppose I'm right about that, am I? It's not how I would describe the incident. 
Well, let's say you're right. I'm 87 years of age, Mr. Piast. And incidents like that don't upset me as much as they might have done if I had been younger. As it is, uh, I can see the matter pretty much from my wife's point of view. You've spoken to her? Oh, God, no. Don't go about asking for trouble at my age. No. You're a foreigner, but you seem a decent enough young fella. I still have some sort of vague recollection of what young men are like, especially foreigners. And I don't blame you. Uh, but I must give you a word of warning. You've bitten off a damp sight more than you can chew. Sir Joseph, I very much love your wife. So do I, my boy, so do I, but that has nothing to do with the case. You don't understand. It's most unfortunate that you should come upon us at the only moment when I forgot myself. You must believe me when I say I worship your wife as I worship God. To think of her in any other way would be blasphemy. <laughs> I see what you mean. I suppose that's why you skulk about in my shrubbery on a Sunday afternoon. I wanted to explain. To Lady Pitts? Yes. In much the same terms as you've used to me? Yes. I see. Seems hardly worthwhile, does it? It is tremendously what you call worthwhile. Well, that depends on the point of view. I suppose you're quite serious about all this. I swear before God, I am. Do you know anything about Lady Pitts? She's told me all. Yeah, take this. There's a rug here. Take that. You're shivering with the cold, man. Go on. Uh, told you all, I should. Well, uh, what has she told you? I'm not at liberty to betray her confidence. Did she tell you that she'd had a nervous breakdown? No. Ah, but well, I'm not surprised. Rather important from everybody's point of view. I don't think she could have told you very much. I tell you, she has told me everything, and I have forgotten it, absolutely. Lady Pitt's father was a parson in Sussex. He had a lot of daughters, all parsons have. But she was the clever one. She took a scholarship at Newnham, and a travel in Rockefeller scholarship after that, just after that had been founded. She had first-class honors in economics and modern languages. Damn stupid, I call it. Woman can't carry all that and her physiology, psychology as well. Anyhow, it was no damn good to her. She had to become a governess like the rest of them. She had to get out of that, of course. So she married some sort of a usher to public school. He was killed climbing Snowden about the year 25. He left her uh, 675 pounds, 18 and fourpence. So she took her uh, chartered accountant's examination. She couldn't bear the idea of teaching anymore. From 1926 to 1937, she was on the board of a biscuit factory in Birmingham. She worked all day and ran a shelter for prostitutes at night. 1937, I married her. In a way, it's been a success. And in a way, it hasn't. She had outbreaks. One can't really be surprised. It's all this emancipation of woman. They think they can do what they like, but it's not their nature to do what they like. So they just wallop about in the tide until they get caught in some new form of slavery. I found her all I could to keep her mind occupied, but there's more than the mind has to be kept occupied. And so she has outbreaks every now and again. I don't know why the hell I'm telling you all this. I told Vincent to throw you out when he came first, and I think that would probably have been the best plan. I wouldn't mind her amusing herself with young men, but the trouble is, she doesn't know how. She has the misfortune to be a dyed-in-the-wool Puritan. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to... Uh, you'll find a little bell in there on the table. Would you ring it for me? Uh, By the way, how do you uh, 
support yourself? I'm a student of arts at London University. I teach French, Russian, and Polish at the commercial college. Well, if I were you, I keep on doing that and leave my wife alone. You say you worship her from afar off? Or something? Well, the further off, the better. If you keep messing around here, you'll only make her ill and get small enough satisfaction for yourself. And if by any chance it's money you're after, you won't get any help. I'm a millionaire, and millionaires don't make money by giving it away. So you are insulting. I'm a gentleman. Gentlemen have to live like everybody else. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Thank you. My tablets are... Yes, sir. Uh, well, give me one. A glass of water. Are you all right, sir? Of course I'm all right. Been all right for 87 years. Get out, Vincent. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, where were we? Uh, yes, you were saying you were a gentleman. Well, if you are a gentleman, you'll know how to act. Lady Pitts isn't particularly happy, but nobody is. And you can take it from an old man. She's not going to be any happier living on your pay. She's 50. And 50 is too late to go Stravagan. Sir Joseph, what you have said has very much disturbed me. I give you my sacred word of honor. I will never again attempt to see your wife. She will be to me as Beatrice was to Dante when she had gone to heaven. That will be all my happiness. It, it will be known to you from the works of Ovid that the god Apollo did once pursue Daphne, the daughter of the aged Jay. As the god was about to seize her, the aged Jay transformed her suddenly into a laurel tree. It's very sad, but it is grand also. For the laurel Daphne still eternally spreads her leaves, and the sun god from 92,830,000 miles away still warms and comforts her and endows her with life. It will be so with me. Suppose you realize I haven't heard a word you said. Uh, what's the gist of it? I will not see Lady Pitts again anymore, my word of honor. <laughs> I'm glad you take that line. Of course, when I'm dead, she can do what she likes. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sir Joseph Pitts. Oh. Uh. Uh. I've taken rather a fancy to you. <laughs> Pity we shall never meet again. Uh, you, uh, know the little shrubbery gate, don't you? Yes. Go out by there. Goodbye. Goodbye, It's you, Kitty. Yes, dearest. Ain't you coming to sit down? Yes, dear. Here, here. Mustn't get cold. It's pretty parky out here. It's November now. Yes, Joe, it's November. Yeah. Wonderful we can get outdoors this time of the year. Yes, Joe. November. Pretty well, all the year around. Never <laughs> mind. Still get out. It's the important thing. How's your little tree? I think it's going to live, if the frost stays away. It's a 
Daphne Loriola, isn't it? Yes, darling. Pretty name, Daphne. There is a, a young fella here looking for you. Young foreign fella. Had quite a chat with him. A decent sort of a young fellow. What did he want? Oh, nothing important. He'll probably write to you. He may not. Did you send him away? No. No. Went himself. Quite a nice sort of fellow. Bit daft. I don't think I'd worry about him if I were you. Anymore. Are you trying to tell me something? No. I can tell you things without trying. It's one of the things I liked best about you. What did he say? Oh, uh, well, how do I know what he said? I'm as deaf as opposed, as you know. Did he leave any message? Nothing in particular. I gather he'd taken a fancy to you. I don't blame him. You look lovely to me. Never bought anything I liked more. Oh, you bought me, did you? <laughs> I suppose so. What does it matter? <laughs> the only way I ever had of getting anything I needed. I... It's as honest a way as most, and all said. I've never regretted it. Have you? I don't believe I have. A far off. What did you say? Afar off, maybe just the other side of the garden wall. But it's far enough. Or the outside of a glass on a glass case. Never mind. It's better than nothing. By God, it's better to be outside the glass case than in it. That's right, old Daphne, isn't it? God, don't you know it? Femina sapiens. Daphne Loriola. Never mind. You're safe behind glass. No frost can reach you. Not if I can help it. Pure, bloody apple white. Collector's piece. I loved you. How do they put it? In my fashion, Kitty. Best I could do. If I'd been younger, not that I wouldn't have. What's the matter with you, Joe? Death, my dear. Just death. First natural thing that's happened to me for half a century. Where are your tablets? Vincent! Vincent, come quickly! Joe! Joe! Oh, Joe! Joe, don't go. I need you. Do you see? about that. <laughs> <laughs> like a liqueur? Don't mind. What liqueurs have we got, George? Van der Hoem and gin cocktail. Oh, Van der Hoem. Yes, two Van der Hoem. <laughs> oh, George, just a minute. You fancy the cure over there? Uh, well, yes, thank you very much indeed, Mr. Gibbs. Oh, that's very kind of you. Right. Six Van der Holmes, John. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Your coffee is getting cold. I like it cold. You'll kick up hell in the morning if it's cold. This isn't the morning. I know it isn't the morning. I never said it was the morning, did I? Right, then, we know what time of day it is. That's something, anyway. Well, moderate your voice, or everyone will hear you. I well, suppose they do. But I've got to say, it won't do them any harm. Whether it does them any harm or not, I don't like looking conspicuous. What'd you put on that hat for? You leave my hat alone. 
I wouldn't touch it with a pair of tongs. Did you ever see our mutual friend, Lady Pitts? No, sir, she hasn't been in recently. Oh. Must be six months since I saw her last. I can't recollect. <laughs> Look who's here. Oh. Good evening, sir. Good evening. We haven't seen you here for some time. This way, sir. I have a very nice table for you here, sir. Oh. Some nice hors d'oeuvre to begin with, sir. We have some very nice beans and chopped turnip, a bit of salt herring, and some very nice beetroot. No, please. I think I should like some Vienna steak and some pommes sauté. Very good. Uh, uh, anything to drink, sir? No, thank you. Very good, sir. Cheers. 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 Your good health. Oh, Mr. Pierce. Pretty good. Very nice. Hello, Mr. Pierce. It is Mr. Pierce, isn't it? Yes, yes. Remember me? I do not think so. Oh, come now. Weren't you in here that night six months ago when we had that little concertong, eh? And haven't I met you in more genial circumstances in a certain house in Hampstead? Yes, you're right, perhaps. Gooch. I suck, Gooch. <laughs> Any familiar faces here? Yes. How do you do? How do you do? Look. Why don't you come and join Mr. Watson and me? We're nearly finished, but we'd be very glad to have you. No, 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 you're very kind, but thank you. I would like to... Oh, come on now. Never ask to be offended if you don't join us. Come on. <laughs> That's it. Hello, Mr. Pierce. Cecil, Mr. Watson. How do you do? Sit you down. <laughs> well, 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 well. It's mild weather for April, isn't it? Yes. Yes, more like November. Yes. Good night, madame. Good night, sir. Hope you enjoyed your dinner. No. We were just discussing our genial hostess, Lady Pitts, before you joined us. Seems she doesn't come in here anymore. It's perhaps just as well. Have you seen anything of her lately? No. Read about her in the newspapers? I don't read the papers. Oh. I saw somewhere where she's given up all her boards and committees. Not surprising, really. Funny that she's kept them on so long. Tragic case, in a way, that. She must have a cool quarter of a million to her own kick. I wonder what she's going to do with it now. Women, there ought to be a law against it. They don't know how to handle money, especially their sort. Oh. <sighs> Sir Joseph was a wily old citizen. She'll miss his advice. Now he's gone. Gone? Yes, didn't you know? Yeah. That's what comes of not reading the newspapers. Oh, yes, he died six months ago. Now, what I could never understand. Oh, yeah. oh, I fainted, that's all. Right, get back, stand back, give him something. Yeah. Yes, give me some water, George. There we are. Here we are. That's it. Oh, he's coming round. That's all right. Yeah, Food poisoning. I shouldn't be surprised. Yeah, These yeah. young foreigners don't get half enough to eat, you know. All right, give, me, give us a bit of a turn then, lad. Here, drink this. Steady you up. Bring some brandy, George. Brandy? What do you think it was? A cigar smoke? No. You say that Sir Joseph is dead. Yes. I thought you'd have known. I must go to her. No, no, no. no, no you just stay right there. Stay right oh, there. Slip round tomorrow yes. afternoon and see her. It'll be all right now. Leave him to Cecil and me. You sure? Yes, yes. There's the brandy. Right, the brandy. Do you like a doctor? No, thank you. It'll be all right now, George. Don't worry. Oh, take that Vienna steak away. Bring him some dry toast. You're not be feeling much like a meal, are you? No. No. Good evening, madame. Good evening, sir. We are very quiet tonight. We ordered a special meal by phone this oh, afternoon. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, what was the name again, sir? Mr. and Mrs. Vincent. Oh, yes, of course, Mr. Vincent. Uh, could I bring you a couple of glasses of sherry and some nice hors d'oeuvre? Yes, thank you. Well, uh, this way, sir, please. Curious, it does come back to me bit by bit. I remember that patch on the floor. Well, they told me I have to wait years for permits. There was a ladder there or something. Oh, it's gone. <coughs> it's rather a ramshackle place, dearest. Well, you would insist on coming here. Eh? I didn't think it was a particularly good idea myself. We might. Good Lord. What's the matter? Oh. Do you want to go? No, why should we? Now I know it was sheer inspiration. Mr. Fias, don't you recognize your old friend? You set him a bad example, your ladyship. You remember me, name of Gooch, Mr. Watson, and the young people? Oh, of course. Well, this is really extraordinary. The long arm of coincidence, eh? How are you, my lady? I'm very well, thank you. Or perhaps I shouldn't be calling you, my lady, eh? Do I understand that we're to congratulate you? Yes, if you like. Well, I'm sure we all do. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and drink the health of the happy pair. Mr. Mrs. Vincent, may you have long life and may all your troubles be little ones. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Vincent. <laughs> Hello. You're not joining in, Mr. Pierce. You've not been very well, has Mr. Pierce? Come along, pull yourself together. 
Drink the health of the happy pair. Oh, well, please yourself. For they are jolly good fellows, for they are jolly good fellows, for they are jolly good fellows. And so say all of us. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hooray! Oh, we'll all sit down together. <laughs> we'll all sit down together. We'll all sit down together. And wait for his reply. <laughs> Very kind of you, I'm sure. It's a bit unexpected. In fact, I'm sure that my wife and myself... Ray! I'm not sure that we'd have come if we knew there was going to be this sort of thing. In fact, I know we wouldn't. As soon as you've drunk our healths, thank you. Uh, uh, come on. No. But Catherine... I said <clears throat> no. Quite a party, eh, George? Yes, sir. Why do you look at me like that? Hmm? I did not know that your husband was dead. Oh, come now, Mr. Pierce. Don't bring funerals up on a happy occasion like this. The king is dead. Long live the king. Do you believe that, that I did not know? Why should I not believe you? And what does it matter? You ask me, what does it matter? You ask me that. Look, no, control yourself, will you? You're amongst friends. I will you? tell you what it matters. Well, listen, we've had enough speeches. Sit down, you. Did you call me, sir? No, did you hear me? Sit down. Darling, you mustn't shout. Well, let him sit down and shut up, then. He has nothing to do with you. I've told you to be quiet. Yes, be quiet, you poor devil. Look, another word from you now. I will Come not out. endure this. You were once my keeper. I did not engage you as my bully. Sit still. Sit very still. I'm sorry, darling. He made me lose my temper. Do you propose to make a public speech at me? I must say what is in my mind. I must say it. I cannot help it. You should not have come here! Come along, sir. There. This is not the answer no, Let him be. I am not afraid of him. Let him alone, I tell you. All right. Will you show it? Are you married to this man? Yes. Do you mind? Yes, I do. Desperately mind. I don't understand why you do this. You knew what you were to me. I told you. I do not understand. I must understand or I shall die. So you wish me to explain my private affairs at the top of my voice in a public restaurant? You were doing that when I first met you. You speak English very well. Do you know what a cab is, Mr. Pierce? Stick what label on me you like. It's nothing to me. Has nobody told you about the poor peasant who worshipped a goddess and then he found that there were no gods or goddesses, only an empty sky? Has nobody told you about the god who loved the immortal girl, thinking she was as he was, and then he found that she was in no good slut? I should make up my mind which it was if I were you. You can't have it both ways. You can have it both ways if you know what it is to love. Madam, madam, you filled my world with wonder. If I had learned that the wonder existed only in my imagination, I could have borne it. But you exist, my God. You exist. The blessed sun has changed to a huge scorpion, and the great mountains to festivorous dunghills, and the green grass to bile. Oh, goodness gracious The me. pure light, the heaven, the light of the mind, the light filled with love. I asked you for nothing more. I desired nothing more. You have plunged my light into darkness to enjoy the embraces of that evil dog. I say, chaps, I think we should go. It was nothing to me that you lied to me. I believed you when you told me you had led the life of a woman of pleasure. It was no more to me than to be told that before the day of creation there was chaos. Now it is ruin and desolation forever and ever. Nonsense. If it is nonsense, you have made it nonsense. Even if I kill myself, it has no meaning. I have nothing to do with all this. It is all in your own head. I told you that. If you feel wretched, it isn't my fault. I won't be blamed. It isn't fair. You're a woman. You tell him it isn't fair. They're in love with themselves, aren't they? They care nothing for us, do they? They make up something out of their own heads and borrow our faces and bodies to clothe it like washing off a line. They do, don't they? I told that fellow I'd played the harlot over half Europe. He believed me. It wasn't true, but he believed me and he didn't care. Do you hear? He didn't care. There never was such a waste of a good lie. He simply wasn't interested. He wasn't interested in me. He wouldn't have noticed me at all if I hadn't got drunk and made a fool of myself. 
I burst in on his meditations, and he said, oh, hello, here's a woman. She'll do for Beatrice or whatever cloudy tart he was dreaming about. It never occurred to him that I was a human being. They're all the same, unless they're pigs. And the pigs are at least honest with themselves and with us. I've found that out now. And that's why I've settled down in a nice, clean pigsty. Don't believe her! She's a liar! She knows she's a liar. She's a damn liar! Just stay where you are. I can deal with this young fool. Mr. Piast, you are an excitable, crazy, ignorant young man. You think because you played at being a bandit in the war that everything is like that. You wanted to save the distressed lady from the ogre, didn't you? The lady was too old to play these games. She married the ogre and settled down. They all do, Mr. Piast. They all do. Don't mumble and mutter there when I'm speaking. The manager thinks we should go out. What's he got to do with it? I think he's right. Well, we haven't had our dinner. Oh, we can have our dinner somewhere else. This isn't a restaurant. It's a bloody debating society. Oh, well, I haven't finished what I was going to say. I never yet met a woman who had. Come on. I seem to have been a little silly. That's all right. You got a bit overexcited. Yes. Yes, I suppose I did. Forgive me. Will you forgive me? Why should I forgive you? You've done me no wrong. It's not you who have done this. Yes, Ernest, that is true. The old people who lived thousands of years ago would not have found this strange. These things are as old as the moon. The white goddess swings the tides idly to and fro, and the little coloured wriggling things in the swaying seas know her. They know that she is higher and more terrible than their simple round of eating, fighting, copulation, and death. But you will not be cast by the fringe of the tide on the shingle to die in the hot sun. Go back into the sea, and The moon is a silly, cold goddess. Find another god, Ernest. Good night. How about the eggplant? <coughs> oh. <laughs> the flowers isn't safe. Yes, of course, I remember. Good night. Good night. You're well rid of her. I think she's bad. So do I. Oh, I don't know. I think there's a lot in what she says. I know now what it is. I am not Dante. No, of course you're not. Nothing like him. No, no. I am Apollo, she is Daphne. Apollo wanted Daphne so much that the old man changed her into a laurel tree. But Apollo still rode on his predestined course day and night. Day and night. That's right. I don't know what you're talking about, but will you have a drink? I thank you. A double brandy. Good. I'm glad you're taking it like that. George, brandy. <laughs> 